seen, we've got too many techniques, a lot of different approaches. Uh, we need to be really clear where we are going to use what and what should be. We have already seen the, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, each one of these techniques, how they could be used and what is the advantage versus disadvantage. Um, but in terms of, there's a thing called STOP, so strategic, tactical, operational. So if you look at the strategic level, people in the senior management, executives, CEO, CXO, CTO, CIO, all of this, typically these CXOs and the uh, senior management people, the product uh, sponsors, the project sponsors, business sponsors, these kind of people, you would typically start with interview. I would suggest have a one-on-one -on -one interview initially just to get a what is in their mind, what is the vision, the, the objectives, and sometimes they might actually have some kind of uh, confidential information that they might not disclose to the larger you know, public. So things like the political aspects of it, the, um, you know, people-centric decisions. I was talking about the example, right, about the Cambridge-based uh, organization where I was doing work. Um, they had this uh, IT team, which was really a lot of overhead uh, IT support team with uh, lot big, huge server rooms, a lot of blade servers and a lot of infrastructure going into that, a lot of costs to maintain that and the team to maintain that. So they said uh, they're not really into IT or technology. They are basically into some uh, totally completely different business. So they said, uh, one finder said, we are not into IT. We're not an, a technology company. We're using technology. That's the main thing. But then why should we spend so much time, cost, and, and people into that, you know, into the maintaining the technology. So that's when they, they took this hard decision that they should uh, let go of this and, uh, and instead outsource this to some uh, specialist IT organization, and go cloud, use um, cloud technologies in the cloud suite. But they can't say this out to the, this, this only I got to know from conducting the interview with the head of this SIG, the strategic innovation group uh, um, you know, uh, head, he's a CXO level person. So all of this is important. So you, you, you then get a new perspective. Once you can understand why something has been done, then you understand, okay, this is the pain area. This is the real pain area. How can you kind of address that in your solution, new proposed solution, right? So very important. So I would suggest if it's a senior executives uh, and senior management and, 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 and the people who are, it doesn't matter. It's not just with the business, even with CTO, technology personnel as well. CTO, for example, CIO, they're also technology people, but then they're senior in their roles. So they've got budgets, they've got uh, constraints, they've got challenges to overcome. They've got the vision of the larger organization, the bag goals, as, as we say, uh, you know, big, hairy, audacious goals that the five-year goals or the three-year goal that their organization as a whole has got. And then to achieve that, this particular project has got its own goal. It's aligned to that PAG goal, right? So you need to really understand all of these the intricate details of this only could be understood with interviews. It cannot be just done in workshops or other kind of uh, techniques. And with the tactical level, you've got the middle management people who are in the uh, director level, people in the managerial level, you know, project managers, program managers, portfolio managers, heads of uh, departments, business unit head, these are the kind of people and then leads. If you have got these people, then I think it would be good to have ideally, um, if you want to get um, ideas or kind of take a consensus and take some decisions, then workshop is the best uh, technique that you can adopt. Um, or you can have an interview, but then it's not really more, it's not effective because you already got that from the interviews with them, with the senior managers. So you understood all of that. And this is about how you can achieve that that goal, the vision, the dream, right? The, so prototyping, for example, could be, you can just engage them perhaps monthly or, or, or a bi-monthly um, you know, meeting where you can show off, you can showcase the, the product that you're working on so that you can get the feedback from them early on. So that's another thing that you can try and engage. So with respect to the operations. The sacrum of stop, you can use and you can five on one. Strategic, tactical, Operational. Yeah, is it a BABAC one or is this uh, one of your? Um, I don't know if it is. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not a uh, official one. It's just I thought stop is basically we stop and think about what we're going to uh, use. So okay. is S strategic, tactical, op is operation stop technique. <laughs> that way, yeah. And. Um, Field personnel, people who are in the in the actually in the on the ground who are working in the 
shop floor, working in the shops, doing the work, actually, you know, developing software, testing it, analyzing it, architecting it, people who are actually doing the work. So these are the people who are on the ground who have got their hands firmly on the, on, on the equipment and the machinery and the, and the products. So with these people, you, you can't get that, you know, in, interviews or workshops don't really help. With these people, because they actually do the work, you can try and observe while they're doing. You can actually do the uh, document analysis with them. You can actually go through some of the procedures, manuals that they have created, some of the documents that they would have created as part of the, uh, the they're carrying out the work. So as, um, as a byproduct of their work, they could have created some documents. You can go through them to get the real good picture. Also, maybe interviews with the end users, customers could help. But most important, because of the fact that these are the people who are going to use your product, what are you going to deliver, the process or the product, they are the best people to actually kind of engage in kind of user testing, show something, pro prototype of your product as it is forming. So you can get more and more um, you know, insights, uh, more valuable feedback from these people because it makes the most sense because they are the ones who are going to use it. Even after you make the sale or even after you deploy the product, or complete the process re-engineering, they're, they're the ones who are going to use it. So you can really get a lot of context-rich data from these people. And they are the people who don't talk much. They are not people who are talkers or who are who go on and on about, uh, about things, but they are people who do. So it's good to actually ask them while they're performing the task or even after that. And then you get really a lot of context-rich data. And also you can learn by uh, looking, understanding, listening to them rather than rather than asking questions and getting answers. It's not like an S-no kind of a thing there. So for these kind of people, you use a lot of the quantitative techniques like document analysis, observations, you know, for all of these are quantitative. And there, there is a bit of qualitative aspect as well there. But then as, as well as, for example, if you look at the, the strategic and the tactical, it's more of qualitative because they even though they are into the uh, data, they're, they're driven by numbers, they're more in terms of giving their views, their preferences, their objectives, um, the, 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 the expectations about what, what we want to do with the project, program or initiative. So they, they're you know, in a position to actually tell you that because they are the people who would be able to guide others, lead others, whereas the operational people, the field personnel, the team, actually development team, the people who do the work, the workers, the professionals, they have a completely different view of or different aspect to how they perform the task. It's about performance of the task. It's about how they actually get to use the product in real life, in real time, practically. And that would actually throw a lot of um, context rich data again. So you need to completely use a different set of uh, techniques with these people compared to what you have got for these. So this, this is what I thought would be really handy for you to know which one to use where in what situation, what um, roles of people you would, the stakeholders you would engage.